am Vaibhav Srivastava from Vaibhav E-Learning Academy. Today we are going to start a new topic in biology that is morphology of flowering plants. This is our part number one. So today we will be discussing about what is morphology and we will be discussing about the different parts of the plants and their modification. So let us start. So morphology of the flowering plant. So first what is the meaning of morphology? So as we all know study of external structure. Study of external features is called morphology. So study of external features is called morphology. And what is anatomy? Study of internal structures. So leave that. So morphology is the study of external structure. When you are looking at a plant, you see two parts in the plant. So now plants are having two main parts in them. Two parts. One part which is visible to us and one part which is not visible to us. One is the root system and one is the shoot system. You all know what is root system and shoot system. The part which is above the ground is called the shoot system and the part which is below the ground is called the root system. So now in root system we have the roots. And in the shoot system we have stem, leaf, flower and fruit. And their modifications and some other extra parts. So the root system has roots and the shoot system has stem, leaf, flower and fruit. So these are the main parts for the plants. So now the roots. Each plant does not have the same kinds of roots and each plant does not have the same kind of stem, flower, uh, stem, flower, leaf and fruit. Each of the plant has modified itself. What is the meaning of modification? Modification means you are adopting to a surrounding. It means that you are changing yourself to adopt to the surrounding. Changing yourself means undergoing a structural or a functional change within a organism to adopt with the surrounding or the habitat is called modification. So here, let us start with the root system. Now, the root system has three types. First type is taproot. Second type is fibrous roots and the third type is adventitious roots. So tap root, fibrous root and adventitious root. Before moving on, for example, there is a seed. From this seed there are two things coming out. One of them is called the hypocotyl and one of them is called the epicotyl. So this part is called Plumule. and this part is called radical. Now what is plumule and what is radical? Plumule, this part, for example this is the ground over here, so this part will come out of the ground and modify into the shoot system which will become the stem and from the stem the branches and leaves and other things. From the radical, this radical goes down, it elongates and it forms the root system. So there are two parts of the seed, one part is the plumule and one part is the radical. Radical is the part from which the root system develops and plumule is the part from which the shoot system develops. Now there are these three types of roots over here. The root system, it is made up of three, like it is actually three types but the, there are some parts of root system. For example, here, these things you can see. We know that this is one tap root, actually this is a tap root, but usually when you are taking a root, this is called the primary root. Primary root. Then these are called the secondary roots. And the small fine branches, the small small things, these are called tertiary roots. So, what is primary root? The definition for primary root is the root which develops directly from the 
uh, radical is called the primary root. Root developing directly from a radical is called primary root. What are secondary roots? The lateral roots which are developing from the primary roots. These are lateral, it means the side. Developing from the primary root. This is the primary root and these are the lateral roots. These are called secondary roots. And the tertiary roots are the roots which are the small, they are like fiber type and they are uh, developed from the secondary root. So these are the three parts of root. Primary, secondary and tertiary roots. So now we have here the three types of roots. Tap root system, fibrous root system and adventitious root system. What is tap root system? So tap root system is primary roots and their branches are the tap root system and example we can take carrot. So for example this is the ground, upper part is the leaf at leaf and all. and from here or if you can take it, this this is the tap root system. The primary root, this is the primary root and this is the secondary root or the branches of it. They form the tap root system. So example, carrot. Tap root system is very easy. Then we are having fibrous root system. So in fibrous roots, they are also having the tap root. They are, the fibrous root also have the primary root but they are short living. So in these roots, here the primary roots disappear. and lateral roots form. The pr uh, primary root disappears and lateral root forms fibrous root system. Here example for fibrous root system we can take any monocoque. So Primary root, actually monocot in the sense most of the monocots, not every monocots, obviously there are some exceptions. Fibrous root in the sense, for example, here there are some leaves, simply, and then if the roots are branched, they are, exp like they are more in the ground, so this kind of root is called the fibrous root. Here there is no, tab, uh, here there is no the main root, the primary root is not there. They are there when they are the small young age and after those they disappear and then the lateral roots, uh, they, they are the in majority and then they form the fibrous root. So this is about the fibrous root example most man monocots. Monocots example maize, you can have maize, rice and wheat. Now adventitious root is a little bit interesting. Roots develop from parts other than radical. So, adventitious roots are the roots that develop from parts other than the radical. So, what are these examples? Examples given in the books are mostly grass, banyan and monstera. Grass, banyan and monstera. So, these three are the adventitious roots. So let us take an example of banyan or let us take an example of grass. Banyan you can see. So these roots are not developing from the radical. Why? Because if you have seen the banyan tree, the roots are originating from one of the lateral stems like this. So from these stems the roots are coming downwards and they are going into the soil. This is one modification of a root. I will explain this in upcoming video only. So here, these are called the modifications of the root. I will explain these kind of roots in the, just in some few minutes. So these roots are developed from the branch. They are not developed from the radical. Similarly, if you are taking grass. So grass is an example of a modification called a runner. So here, what happens is when one grass, let us take this one grass. So, its stem runs through here and at one node it, it is uh, being formed and then it is continued and again at one node this is being formed. So, here the grasses are developed, the roots which are developed. So, here after reaching this point the roots are being developed over downside and here also downside. 
these are not developed from the radical, they are developed from the nodes between the stems, axillary buds and axillary roots. So that is why these are coming under the adventitious roots. So these are the three types of root system. First is called the tap root, second is called the fibrous root and third is called the adventitious root. Primary roots and their branches consist of the tap root, primary roots will disappear, so then fibrous roots dominate and adventitious roots are the roots which develop from parts other than the radical. So this is the main what is root system. Now comes the regions of root systems. So what are the different regions of the root system? We are taking one cortex like this and then we are going down like this. So first let me explain you what is this. This is like you are taking the branches like this, right? So one of them we have cut through a part from top to down like this. We have taken one string of the root and we have drawn it over here. Yeah. So this will explain you what, what are the uh, different regions of the roots. So first of all, there are some structures like this. And here there are some dots. So what is this? So let us first label this part. This is the root cap. This zone is called the root cap zone. This zone is called region of meristematic activities. This region is called region of elongation. This region is called the region of maturation and these are called the root hairs. So these are the five regions of the roots. This region we will be going from the uh, down to the top. So from down to top we will be going. So first one is the root cap. What is root cap? So root cap is just like a thimble like structure. What is the meaning of thimble? So the thumb like structure, the apex of the thumb, that kind of structure which protects the region of meristematic tissues and meristematic cells, not tissues. So this root cap is like a covering which will uh, protect the meristematic cells so that they won't get damaged and if the meristematic cells get damaged, then the growth of the root will become, uh, it will freeze or it will stop and ultimately the plant will die. So this root cap help in the uh, protection for the meristematic cells. Region of meristematic activities. So what is the region of meristematic activities? So these are the cells which are called the meristematic cells. Here let me write. Meristematic cells. If you remember what these cells are, these are called the dividing cells. These cells are the dividing cells. These cells divide continuously and that increase in the in, that uh, helps in the increase of the length. Then region of elongation. Region of elongation is partially matured, partially immature region. So after the meristematic region, now this is continuing to grow down. Then the part above is slowly getting matured. So that part is responsible for the uh, increase of length of the plant. It is called the, sorry, not plant root. It is called the region of elongation. Region of maturation. So this re in this region, the cells are differentiated and matured. Differentiated and matured in the sense still here, this region of elongation region, they are little bit immature. But after entering, entering this region, they start becoming matured. And matured in the sense now they start having the epidermal cells which produce the root hairs. What is root hairs? Root hairs increase the surface area. What is surface area? The area which uh, one person, like one 
object over here is taking. So surface area, it means that if we are increasing the surface area, then these roots will go far away and they will pick up the water and minerals from there and they will transport through the vascular bundle xylemin fluid. So these are the regions of the root, the root cap, the region of meristematic activity, region of elongation, region of maturation and root hairs. So this is the topic. Now we are going to the main part that is called the modification of roots. So here we have modifications of the root. Modifications. We will be talking about many different modifications in this video. Let us see what are the modifications on there. First, we will be talking about fleshy roots. Then, we will be talking about respiratory roots. Then, we will be talking about assimilatory roots. After that, we will be talking about nodular roots. After nodular roots, we will be talking about prop roots. Then, stilt roots. Then, Parasitic roots and then hygroscopic roots. So these many types of roots we will be talking about. Fleshy roots, respiratory roots, then we will be talking about the assimilatory roots, nodular roots, crop roots, still roots, parasitic roots and hygroscopic roots. So these are the different modifications of roots. So first of all, why are roots modified? Why do you need modification in a root? So there are some plants which grow in some specific areas and they are not able to cope up with the surrounding. So what they do is they try to adapt themselves to their surrounding and to adapt themselves they have to undergo some changes in their structure or in their function. So these changes which the plants or the parts of the plants undergo to cope up with the surrounding or to adapt to the surrounding is called modification. So these many modifications roots can show. We will discuss about each and every modifications now. So let us start with the first one which is the fleshy roots. So what are the fleshy roots? And they, these many roots, they also have some separate names also. What are the other names of fleshy roots? We will be discussing about those. So, the first type of root is fleshy roots. So, what are fleshy roots? As the name suggests, they are tuberous. tuberous roots and they help in storage of food. So these are tuberous roots and they help in storage of food. So they, the fleshy roots or the tuberous roots they also are of some types. So first of all tap roots example is carrot Radish. So, the fleshy roots, the different types of roots also show some examples. So, tap roots are example carrot and radish. Then, we have the examples of adventitious roots. Example, Sweet potato. So carrot, radish, even you can include turnip here. And adventitious root examples are sweet potato. And then fibrous roots. Example is asparagus. 
asparagus. So these are the fleshy roots. The tuberous, these are the tuberous roots. They help in storage of food. The tap roots, example, carrot and radish. Adventitious root, example, sweet potato. Fibrous root, example, asparagus. So why are these roots modified to store these foods, materials? So they, as I said, that some of the roots are developing in some other areas, other than the normal areas. So those areas do not have enough space for the plant to grow. Because if you have noticed these carrots, radish, sweet potatoes, and asparagus, they are not planted at a distance. They are planted all closely together. So if those plants were to grow up, then there would be a mess because there would be not enough spaces. That is why the roots start storing the food. Slowly, slowly. First, how did they modify was first of all they were big plants. Then the roots started modifying small, small uh, some some foods. So then the roots from becoming very thin, hair-like, to they started becoming broad and thick and thick. And then finally they become thick enough that you can eat the root directly. So that's why we call them as tuberous roots or fleshy roots. So let us revise what are fleshy roots. These are tuberous roots. They help in storage of food. And the examples are carrot, radish, and the tap root. Sweet potato in the adventitious root. And for the fibrous root, we have the example as asparagus. So this was about the fleshy roots. Now, the second type of roots are pneumatophores. The second type is pneumatophores. So, what are these pneumatophores? First of all, these pneumatophores are respiratory roots. So these nematophores are respiratory roots. These are found in plants which are in marshy areas. Marshy areas or swamps. Then these roots as their name suggests they help in respiration. So these roots which are pneumatophores, they help in respiration. Examples are rhizophora and avicennia. Rhizophora and avicennia. So these are about the pneumatophores or the respiratory roots. Pneumatophores are respiratory roots. They are found in marshy areas or swamps. What are marshy areas or swamps? In some areas, so as I said, modification, why they modify? Because they are in some other habitat. These are in marshy habitats. Why do they adopt? Because in marshy areas, there is too much of water. And because of the water, the soil is actually combined and it is very packed. So that the oxygen is not able to go down. And if there is no oxygen, they will die, right? The plants will die. So that is why the roots, if this is the soil, the roots come out in a tall manner like this. The roots are having some pores, stomatal openings or some pores, not stomatal pores, but some pores through which the oxygen enters inside. So these kind of roots are called pneumatophores. These are found in plants like Rhizopora and Abyssinia and they help in respiration. This was about pneumatophores. Then the third type is assimilatory roots. Third one is assimilatory roots. What are assimilatory roots? What is the other name of these roots? The other name of these roots are photosynthetic. Photosynthetic roots. So the other name for these kind of assimilatory roots is photosynthetic roots. What they do is they help in photosynthesis. These are called photosynthetic roots. They help in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis and these roots have chlorophyll. And they are 
green in color. Example, Tinospora, no, Tinophyllum. Then we have Trepa and Tinospora. So, Tinophyllum, Trepa and Tinospora, these three are the examples for assimilatory or photosynthetic fruits. So, why are they modified to perform photosynthesis? As I said, the plants are in different regions, so that's why they have to modify it to perform different functions. These kind of roots, these kind of plants like Tinophyllum, Trepa and Tinospora, they are first of all little bit small plants. They are, they come under between the herbs and the shrubs. Shrubs are little bit tall plants, herbs are the short plants, so they come in between them. They are medium sized because they live in dark areas because they are small and they live in dark areas so the area from the leaf and the stem is not enough for photosynthesis and for the sunlight that is why the roots are modified and they have the pigment chlorophyll and they are modified to perform the function of photosynthesis so that is why they are photosynthetic roots they help in photosynthesis they have chlorophyll they are green in color Tinophyllum, Tinospora and Trapa are the examples for the assimilatory roots. So these are the main points for assimilatory roots. They are photosynthetic, they help in photosynthesis, they have chlorophyll, they are green in color and the example is Tinophyllum, Trapa and Tinospora. These are the assimilatory roots. After the assimilatory roots, we are having the fourth type that is nodular roots. Now what are nodular roots? So first from the name we will derive that these roots have nodes. I will explain what are these nodes. Found in leguminous plants. What are these leguminous plants? The leguminous plants are the pulses. The pulses which we eat, the dals, these are leguminous plants. Okay. Now the main point. Have the bacteria rhizobium. So now uh, this may be confusing because rhizobium and uh, rhizophyllum, so there, there is one thing called rhizophyllum, rhizospora and then rhizobium. So these are, may, these may be confused, they may form confusion. Rhizobium, rhizospora and rhizopore, so these are the terms. So rhizobium, so B for bacteria, so you can remember rhizobium. Rhizobium bacteria, so what they do is, they help in nitrogen fixation. This is the main point. Help in Nitrogen fixation. Now what is the meaning of nitrogen fixation? Nitrogen fixation is for understanding this you need to learn about nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle is a very big topic I will explain in brief. So actually in the surrounding we already know that there is 70% of uh, nitrogen. Yeah, 70% of nitrogen and almost 27% oxygen and the remaining 3% other gases combination. So out in this 70% nitrogen, how is that nitrogen being maintained? There is no organism which produces nitrogen like uh, directly. Uh, organisms produce methane, hydrogen mostly, hydrogen very less cases but methane mostly. And oxygen, oxygen the plants, there is like uh, plants, 50% of the earth is uh, having more than 50% of plants, so oxygen. Others, carbon dioxide, many organisms, like most of the organisms, they are giving uh, carbon dioxide. So this 70% nitrogen, how is this being maintained? These are being maintained by the nodular roots, which are rhizobium and the leguminous plants. So these plants are having rhizobium which absorbs some nutrients and they produce nitrogen in the air. 
So these produce nitrogen in a very large quantity. That is why the percentage is 70 percent nitrogen in the atmosphere. So they are having nodes. They are found in leguminous plants. Have the bacteria rhizobium, and these help in nitrogen fixation. And one one example you can have is Arrakis hypogea. hypogea. Arrakis hypogea is one leguminous plant in which this bacteria rhizobium is present. So these are about the nodular roots. They have nodes, they are found in leguminous plants, they have the bacteria rhizobium, help in nitrogen fixation and the example is Arrakis hypogea. So after nodular roots, so these were the roots which actually were modified to perform some functions. Now there are some roots which help in the support, other than the other works they help in support. So now we have the fifth one, that is the crop roots. What are crop roots? Other name of these roots is called hanging roots. These are formed from branches. So these are formed from branches, thus you can say that these crop roots are adventitious roots. So are adventitious. Are adventitious roots. So adventitious roots, they are adventitious roots, they are formed from the branches or the trunks of the tree. They are called the hanging roots and they are also called the supporting roots. Example is the banyan tree. So, if you are taking, these are the tree, like, these are the branches. And this is the tree, for example. Then from one particular branch, the, no, the, the roots are forming and they are going under the ground. Like this is the ground, they are going under the ground and they are helping the plant to support itself. Why? It is because this banyan tree is one of the oldest tree and uh, this banyan tree, oldest tree in the sense they are formed from long time ago. So that is why they are, but here their evolution has been less. So this has been a record that banyan tree hasn't evolved too much since it started. So this, uh, the main, which is the branch, the main like the bark of the, the wood of the tree is not strong enough to hold the weight of such big branches and leaves. So that is why from these branches the roots are forming and they are going under the ground and they are fixing with the soil. And these help in the, uh, like holding the weight of the upper part of the tree. That is why these are called crop roots, hanging roots. Hanging because they are hanging from the top. They are formed from the branches, these branches. They are advantageous, yes, because they are not formed from the radical, they are formed from the branches. And the example is banyan tree. Ficus. This is the common scientific name for banyan tree. So this was about the crop root. Next we are having stilt roots. After crop roots we are having stilt roots. So what are stilt roots? Yes. Stilt roots. So what are the stilt roots? The other name for stilt roots is called brace roots. So we have studied in banyan tree that the roots are coming from top to down. So top to down. So in botany, mostly in biology, the arrangement from top to down is called basic petal arrangement. We will learn about this in the flowers and the uh, leaves concept. But now still I am saying, so that arrangement is called basic petal arrangement from top to down. And from down to top is called acropetal arrangement. So these are various roots. They are found in sugar cane slash maize. Then these roots help in support. They develop from from lower nodes of the plant. So
so they develop from the lower nodes of the plant and they help in supporting supporting roots so there are like sugar canes like for example you are taking the sugar cane plant it is a very tall plant so that is why the height just to maintain that height and for example if there is a wind blowing so that it does not fall down that is why there are these are the lower internodes so these things which you see in the sugar cane are called nodes so from the lower nodes there are some roots coming out which are going to the soil and they are attaching themselves to the soil so that is why these kind uh, when the wind is blowing the sugar cane doesn't blow off with the wind because of its height it may blow but because of these brace roots or stilt roots it is fixed in one location so these are called brace roots they are found in sugar canes and uh, they develop from the lower roots of the plant and the example is sugar cane maize and they are also called supporting roots so this was all about the stilt root we have two more types of roots left one root is parasitic and one is hygroscopic so now parasitic roots take one parasitic these are the seven roots seven one which are parasitic roots so what are parasitic roots from the name parasitic roots in the sense they act like parasites so they depend on host for food so they act like parasites and they depend on the host for the food so now these parasitic roots they are having two types let me explain first these two types so there are two types of parasitic roots one type is called partial parasites and one type is called complete parasites partial parasites and complete parasites so for first we let me give the example like viscum and striga and complete parasite example is cuscuta and rafflesia so cuscuta and rafflesia so they are acting like parasites so you know what are parasites parasites depend on the host what is the meaning of host so parasites are one of the like the types of the worms where some of the worms they are actually from mostly platyhelminthes and annelids and also ascanthes so these kind of parasites they are living in the body of other organisms so that is why they are dependent on the host on which they are living so these are called the host and those are the worms are called the parasites so here also parasitic roots the parasitic roots their other name is actually hostoria one more point hostoria so these roots are the sucking roots so they suck the nutrients from the plants partial parasites so as we all know one plant has xylem and phloem and phloem so partial parasites are the parasites which in uh, so the actually the parasites are having one organ in them which is called suckers so these partial parasite insert their suckers only in the xylem of the plant xylem and phloem are there right what is the work of xylem the work of xylem is to take water and minerals from the roots from down to the top and what is the work of phloem to take the uh, prepared food material from the leaves to the other parts of the plant so these partial parasites they take the they put their sucker in the insert their sucker inside the xylem so that they can take the food uh, the water and the minerals from the xylem and they can help in their own survival rather than the plant survival 
complete parasites Cascuta and Rafflesia. So they insert their suckers both in the xylem and phloem and they take the nutrition from the xylem and phloem. So they get both water and food and minerals also. So there might be a question in your mind that if they are putting their suckers inside the xylem and phloem, then how is the plant living? It is because if plant also needs some nutrition to live right. Even with the parasite, the plant lives for a very long time, more than even 100 years. But for how does it live? Even though the suckers are inserted in the xylem and phloem, they take the food only when they need it. When they are not, they, when they don't need it, then they do not allow, they do not disturb the flow of the uh, whatever the food and minerals inside the uh, xylem and phloem. So when they need the food, they suck it. When they don't need, they just let it go. But if you see in humans, in humans they do not show such partiality. In humans they suck all the foods and minerals, whatever they are getting, except the antitoxins. So this, like this, is one work of the parasites which are inside the humans, at least tapeworm. So whatever food you are eating, whatever water, water and mineral, whatever nutrition you are having, they absorb the nutrition and. So you may try that we can, if they are eating everything, you can give them some medicines like antibacteria. Just those kind of medicines, they are avoiding it and all the medicines are coming out. But only the nutrition, they are sucking in. So this is difference in the human parasites and the uh, plants parasite. Plants parasites are less harmful than human parasites. So complete parasites are example, Cascuta and Rafflesia. Partial parasite, Viscum and Shriga. Rafflesia is the largest plant in the world, the largest plant in the world. So this is the parasitic roots. Then the last one we are having that is hygroscopic epiphytic roots. Hygroscopic roots or epiphytic roots. The ninth one. Hygroscopic roots. Now what are hygroscopic roots? First of all, the other name of them is epiphytic roots. Epiphytic roots. These roots develop from others, not from on other plants. And they absorb moisture from surrounding. They have some special kind of tissues called velamen tissues. These tissues are dead tissues, but they help in sucking the moisture from the surrounding. So these three are these four are the main points. Hygroscopic roots or epiphytic roots, they uh, grow on other plants so that they can suck the, like suck in the sense they can absorb the uh, from the humidity, the moisture from the surrounding. They have some special tissues called velamen tissues which are dead tissues. They help in absorbing the moisture from the other plants. Example is Vanda, which are also known as orchids. Vanda or orchids. So these are found on, like for example, if there is a tree log over here, this is one plant, something like this. So on these, these roots are developing and these roots are exposed to the uh, atmosphere. So they are taking the uh, humidity from the atmosphere and they are using in the development of their own growth. So they are developing on other plants. So this may, this is also a living plant only. So uh, it may be a log, it may be some other plant on which it is growing, but this one, the log is also a living only. So these are the different modifications of the uh, roots. So the hygroscopic roots are called epiphytic roots. They develop on other plants, absorb moisture from surrounding. They have velamen tissues, which are dead tissues, which help them absorb. And vanta or orchids are the examples. So that is it for today's video. We have learned about what is morphology and then what are roots, what are the regions of root, what are the modifications of root. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, do subscribe to this channel and like this video, share this video to your friends if you find it informative. Press the bell icon. See you next time. Thank you and goodbye.